We here at the Cine Fanatics have decided that as a movie YouTube channel, we're going to start stop talking about movies. Anyways, let's see how this goes. What's going on, everybody? It is Wednesday night. It is 6 Pacific, 9 Eastern, 8 Central. That means it's time for the tagline here on the Cinefanatics. We are the Cinefanatics. My name is Robert Adams. I am Chris Adams. And we are, we, we, we've decided to nix that earlier idea and go ahead and talk about movies on this movie YouTube channel. So I, I just felt like we, we, we as a, a company would just fail if we're a movie. Spit it channel. out. And talk about movies. So <laughs> that seems like a bad business plan for anyone. So, <laughs> yes, we're going to talk about movies. And I promise you that we're not going to take eight years to do so. Yeah. Uh, man, there is a lot, a lot to cover tonight. Uh, as we jump in, as always, at the beginning of the show, you have comments, you have questions, you have concerns, anything you want to report to us, feel free to report it over there, streamlabs.com slash cinefanatics. Uh, that's a great place to get our attention. There is also Super Chat in the YouTube known universe that also will direct our eye holes over towards whatever it is that you want to ask and talk to us about. <laughs> I never talk about my eye holes. Yeah. Um, let me see. Let me check a couple of things real quick. Yes, that's right. I'm going to st to chat with you guys while we uh, are handling some technical fun things. He is currently uh, frozen. He is coming back in. I don't know what's happening right now, but it's okay. We've got it under control. Don't worry about it. You good? Are yep. we Yes, welcome to the tagline, guys. We're gonna start it. No, we're not gonna start over. Uh, we we just like to we like to fly by the seat of our pants on this show sometimes. Mm -hmm. The seat of our pants are 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 a flying tonight. Yeah. Uh, first thing right off the bat, I, after we're talking about the super chat, streamlabs, everything, uh, I do want to thank all the new viewers that we have for this show. This is our flagship show. This is where we talk about like ourselves personally, so you get to know us, and also movie news and other movie content going on. Uh, as you can tell by the thumbnail for this video tonight, uh, we will be deep diving into the Spider-Man uh, No Way Home trailer, looking at the Easter eggs and theories and stuff that uh, was there in that trailer. Uh, this this live stream show typically takes about an hour or so. That's where we're trying to keep it. At. Uh, we're going to talk about ourselves and a bunch of other movie news. So if y'all want to stick around, if y'all are watching for the Spider-Man, uh, yeah, it's going to be a good discussion tonight. Uh, if you are not wanting to know anything about the Spider-Man trailer, I know we have a couple of friends that are doing the uh the daredevil not daredevil the character but daredevil as in like people who risk their lives they're trying to do the stunt of not knowing anything about this movie so therefore they're staying away from the trailer they're anyways uh if you are one of those type of people we will let you know before we dive into that trailer so you could click off we don't want you to click off but i mean if you want to go so be it <laughs> and more right. power to you for avoiding that because that is going to be an awesome task to undertake and I think you're insane, but go for it. Just go for yeah. it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, other thing, uh, patreon.com slash cinefanatics. Uh, we got a couple of things happening on there. Uh, if you are a part of our Patreon, uh, first of all, even at the $1 tier, you will be able to join our Discord. We're building a movie-loving community, so come join us over there on the Discord as well. At the $5 due tier, you can join us for movie watch-alongs, one of which will be tomorrow night uh, at the same exact time as we started this. Tomorrow night, as voted by all of y'all on our Twitter at Cinefanatics MLP, y'all have decided that we will watch Jurassic Park. Uh, it's been a while since I've seen this, but I remember watching this like all the time when I was younger. So uh, this is gonna be a fun movie to deep dive and watch with like a bunch of people who also absolutely love this movie. So uh, if you voted and you're not a part of our Patreon. Consider joining the Patreon at the $5 tier since you voted. We heard your vote. Now come see what your vote gets you. So, yeah. Anything else you have to add to that? Uh, we're sparing no expense on this watch along, guys. And uh, we were so preoccupied with whether or not we could. 
we didn't think we, if should. we should we do should. a watch along we're going to we should we should do it yeah yeah just as long as no one's looking at our watch along like ian malcolm say man it's a big pile of crap right there <laughs> just hopefully we don't get that uh anyways uh what other shows we have anything else coming up lately i don't think we have too much of anything really on the horizon right now nothing big on the uh Nothing big on the channel is happening. Uh, not till like we got some like big shows and everything coming, which I know like I think Hawkeye is the next big show coming out that we'll probably be covering. So that's yeah. like three months away still, though. So, you know, it's, it's we got a while on, on that right now. We're just handling the uh, the Patreon stuff that we're doing as well as this this show weekly. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, I do want to go through real quick before we start talking about other stuff, and let's see who all is here as we start the show. If you are watching live, please sound off in the chat if you feel like it. Let us know you're here. Uh, I do see Angel Vibe saying, can't wait for this movie. I'm going to believe he's talking about uh, Spider-Man No Way Home. Uh, we completely agree. That trailer was bonkers. Uh, we do have Garth. Garth McMurray is here watching us. Thank you for being here, Garth. And we also have commentating nerd saying howdy. Well, how do you two, sir? Uh, and then we also have Jake Alcavetta. Anyways, um, <laughs> I was trying to play that off like as deadpan as I can. And there's oh. Jake. I do. I like when Jake's here too. So uh, you said no spoilers, but you just said one. Okay. Well, we're trying not to spoil anything, I guess, but. <laughs> such a warm welcome as always um so yeah how, how have you been this past week personally i've been i've been okay i've been, I've been, I've been good i've been fine i've been, been been having been having a good time been having an all right time you know just we're just living life right now and we're seeing well, what happens is, is your time good or all right which one was it it can't yes. be both good and all right okay yes. apparently it can yeah I, I find a way life finds a way nice Jurassic um park watch along guys um yeah no it's been good i mean there's there's not a whole lot to add i've been, been having some fun like uh catching up oh i've been having fun catching up with uh brooklyn 99 that's a tv show everybody should watch i'm not gonna do like any like breakdown reviews or anything right here but i'm saying if you haven't been watching brooklyn 99 i know it's like in its last season right now go back on hulu and just boom binge uh i think i'm in season five such a funny show nice. such a funny show so uh how's your uh twitching going twitching is all right it's had a little bit of a break obviously because last week we were doing fcl stuff so i usually don't twitch when there's fcl stuff's happening uh just because it's hard to stream and then lead into i'm i need to be on fcl and ready to do trivia and all that so mm -hmm. uh i know we don't like to talk about fcl on the show but just leave it on uh Whatever. so yeah <laughs> we do so we the point is all the time. yeah so the point is uh I was able to do uh, Twitch this last Tuesday. Had some fun. Had some fun. I love. I really do actually enjoy like streaming, especially when people are like there and hanging out in the chat because that's my favorite part. Honestly, there you go. That's my favorite part is actually talking with everybody who shows up in the chat. Even if you know, like not interested in the game I'm playing or whatever, it's perfectly fine. Just hang out and just chat with me. Like that's that's almost the entire reason why I want to do it. I just like to talk to people and just hang out with folks. So. Yeah. That's my that's that's the extent of my socializing right now, guys. Please come be my friend. I almost I almost want to do that, but like I don't know Twitch or how to do like everything set up for no, Twitch. I know like OBS and whatnot, but you're you're too old. Don't worry about it. Yeah, I guess. Uh, I, I I would like to possibly do like hangout stuffs so like on uh, on like my YouTube channel, but yeah. Uh, let me see. We got <laughs> Catatot saying it was all right. Good. It was all right. Good. <laughs> Cat knows cat cat's in my head all almost the time. all right almost all right but a little bit of left now and then I don't want to I'm not gonna dive into that one yeah and then uh you are a big fan of playing uh was it Pokemon snap or Pokemon games on your twitch so uh you like taking photos of beaver butts or so whatever contextually, the Pokemon. contextually there's a level where there's a a, a beaver type Pokemon whose butt is just hanging out he's he just he's just chilling <laughs> don't worry about it I'm glad that you brought up that comment so that I could expound upon that. Appreciate yeah. it. Because uh, if we're known for one thing, it's <laughs> our love of beaver butts and beaver nuggets. We're in we're in Texas, so 
We like our. Yeah, let's turn this conversation to Bucky's. Yeah, our sponsor no. today, Bucky's Beaver Nuggets, sponsoring the Cine Fanatics since they're not. <laughs> uh, so for my side of this, uh, as I mentioned last week, uh, I just started working from home, so I've gone through an entire week of sitting right here. Right here is where I sit all day long without the camera stuff being on because that would be weird and probably a violation of my company's policy since I have access to customers' personal names and addresses and Yolo! socials and stuff. Yolo! Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, no, camera's not on during that at all. Um, it's, it's a little interesting. Uh, what was really funny, so today's my first day off since I started working from home. And one of the first things I did today when I got up after like eating breakfast and then I get up and I went somewhere, I went grocery shopping and went like regular shopping, just got out of the apartment. And it's like, now, now I flipped. Like I had days, like my days where I would go out to go to work and then my days off, I would never leave the apartment. Now it's my days I'm working. I'm in the apartment totally. And I never leave until my day off. So this is interesting. Um, Save a lot of money on gas, so that was nice. Uh, good plus size, plus size, plus side to this. I am probably going to get a plus size though, because I'm a lot of just sitting here and eating all day. <laughs> so we'll see. So, so the counter to that, obviously, is getting up in the morning and, and and going for a nice brisk walk to start your day. That's a uh, that's recommended for anybody out there who is working from home and feels trapped and depressed inside your home all day. I recommend yeah. uh, getting out before you start your day. I might, I, I might need to incorporate that because exercise is be being rough. in nature. Exercise being yeah. in nature is great. I went to, I went on a trail this last weekend. hiked a hiked a trail down here in Austin. Uh, it was a lot of fun because it was, it's, it's. There's like, there's like vitamins and nutrients that you get from the sun and the plant life around you, uh, being in nature. So, I would, I would highly recommend if you have the opportunity to always do so. No. Uh, anyways, yeah, so that's what I am looking at personally so far. Uh, let's dive into, before we start the movie talk, let's talk about today's episode of What If. Tonight, we ask what is, what was, and what could be. But the most important question of all, what if we like this episode? I'm still and a fan of that. <laughs> the answer is we did. Uh, yeah. Uh, here's the thing. <laughs> you and I actually have not talked about this. We've had all day I, to talk about this, and we haven't. And you know what? I actually like it because this is the same thing, situation that we had last week as well. I kind of like this habit of just we don't talk about this at all until we get onto the show. And then we just hear each other's thoughts off this. Uh, Garth? What if Chris could grow real facial hair? <laughs> I'm going to time funny. you out. I'm going to time you out. Um, here's the other thing, too. Just a quick behind the scenes. When like we go see a movie, before we film like our review or reaction to that movie, uh, we typically, like in the car ride back from the theater, we'll sit there and talk about our thoughts and feelings of that movie overall. What's weird, and this is something I would love to be able to incorporate somehow, some of the conversations we have in that car are better or we're talking about things that we don't talk about in the review, but it's more of like a, just, we're not performing for the camera. We're just actually having an honest like conversation about our thoughts of that movie. So this is kind of what you're going to get with this. What if breakdown uh, last night or today's episode is what if the world lost its mightiest heroes? Uh, and as I tweeted out last night, like three minutes into the episode, I was like, oh crap, this episode is going dark real quick, like super fast. A very fascinating concept this week. I feel like that's going to be the theme for like every one of these weeks. So I was like, oh, that's a very fascinating concept. I didn't consider this. And well, it's, I think it, that's what they're aiming yeah. for. If they're doing it right, that's, that's what you should be saying. So mm -hmm. I think it's a flip from what we've had the first two weeks, which I think that was done intentionally. The first yeah. week is the nice, friendly, what if Peggy Carter was 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 Captain America or Captain Carter instead of Captain America. Uh, yeah. Then the next one was like, what if T'Challa was Star-Lord? Like, oh, these are all nice and friendly and make you smile. And then this one finally, right, right out of left field. Nope, killing Iron Man, dead. What See if ya. death? Bye. Yeah, what if death? 
just death overall. Like, what if so much death? Yeah. Uh, it, it was kind of a weird concept for this episode. Uh, like, again, not really going to try to spoil too much of it. I mean, it, it. Obviously, this episode is about all the major, like, Avengers dying. Uh, this is at the very beginning of Nick Fury trying to form the Avengers Initiative uh, before the first Avengers yeah. movie. So what we're saying and is all so, this is pretty much the events of Nick Fury's big week. If you know what that is, that's the yeah. one week time span that uh, hit Iron Man 2, Thor, and Incredible Hulk. So all it's pretty much the, the events of those movies if the Avengers were being picked off one by one, essentially. Yeah. Uh, so, it yeah, it was kind of interesting. Just right off the bat, like I said, in the first three minutes, Iron Man, gone. Like, just keel over, dead. Deadsies. Deadite. Well, I don't know. But what was that middle one? Desies. There's <laughs> uh, your Scrubs reference, folks. All right, yeah. moving on. <laughs> uh, and yeah, that really just set the tone for this because then you uh, like you got the Watcher coming on screen and talking about like how he's wa- looking over everything, and I was like, "You are a bastard, <laughs> crazy Watcher guy, just killing off everyone like." Uh, it was really interesting because, like, after you kill him, your first thought is like, "Well, what else is going to happen?" Yeah. <laughs> did, we, did we watch the same episode? It was too many donuts, which is funny because, as I said, like while watching Iron Man two, you actually cannot sit inside of that Randy's Donuts ep- building. Not without a ladder to get up there. Yeah. Well, there's uh, no. Oh. No, inside yeah. the building. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, in, no, yeah, inside where they're sitting at the table, talking to where Nick Fury and Roman yes, the, the Randy Stark are sitting. In, the Randy's Donuts in L.A. is just the the kitchen bakery area where they make the donuts. There's no like customer seating. So, for those of you who haven't been there, but yeah, uh, what were your thoughts on this? Seeing everyone that we beloved just getting picked off left and right. I thought it was a cool concept. I really did. It was like a, I didn't, again, like I was saying, I didn't think about this. Like let's, let's explore a world where all the Avengers died before they became the Avengers. And it's, it's always interesting because I feel like they're kind of like stretching the bounds on what we know about these characters already in order to accomplish some of these storylines. Like, uh, is there a way for Hulk to actually, you know, die is is that is that something because like we know from you know deleted scene from incredible hulk and you know from what uh bruce banner talked about in avengers uh he tried to put a gun to himself and the the big guy spit the bullet back out you know that didn't it didn't work out so we have a situation here where you know the opposite effect happens with him and it's like is that really possible you know some of these some of these things and you know, again, without going into too many spoilers as far as like what happened, uh, it's it's an interesting concept to see someone, you know, whoever's whatever's happening here, you know, kind of figure out how to pick them off one by one. And I I like I like the direction they went in and then kind of how the episode wrapped up, because how the episode wrapped up is what actually caught my interest and in going, you know what? I actually would like to come back to this universe and see what happens from here based on, yeah. uh, you know, where, you know, I'll say where Loki was because Loki was involved in this episode where he ended up in regards to, yeah. And then in regards to uh, where Captain America and, you know, certain other characters might have ended up. Uh, and just kind of exploring how, what the world and, and maybe even the events of, say, the first Avengers movie or, you know, therein, what that all looks like, given the situation that we're in now. Uh, it, obviously, Marvel can't explore this universe because that would have meant that half the movies in phase one and two and three all couldn't possibly exist. So... You know, it's it's an interesting concept. It's an interesting world for uh, for uh, for them to to play around in, and that's I think this this episode is an example of what I think I'm going to enjoy about this series. Is mm-hmm. you know, let's create different realities, let's create different worlds and different universes where we can have some fun with some different stuff. 
I, I like this the interesting point of this because again you've mentioned Loki being in this. Loki came in essentially kind of like instead of how he came in at the beginning of the Avengers, he came in and for a, a totally different reason in this. And yet he seemed to be a little more like headstrong and a little more knowing what he was doing and on top of things. Yeah. Uh, so I would, yeah, I agree. I would be eager to see like how the direction with what he was doing and with what Nick Fury is left doing by the end of this episode, how all that would have changed and what direction all that would have gone. It would have been kind of amazing. Uh, the other thing I want to touch upon real quick, probably our last comment about uh, what if, uh, and it's the same comment we've been making every week so far. The animation is gorgeous. I love it. I want, like, I actually, I, I believe this is actually like cell, cell animated as well. Yeah, I just want, yeah. I want like the full on cell. Someone like sell the cells so I could put the cell on my cell or room. What does that make sense? No, my head hurts. <laughs> my head hurts now. I want to put the I want I want those images. I want the frame. I want to put it in a frame and I want to put it on display because they are just gorgeous, like pieces of art. Uh, absolutely. So. Oh yeah, yeah, um, yeah, exactly. So what I actually kind of want now is, I want, I want like so you had like the Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes cartoon, and then there was like another Avengers cartoon after that that didn't matter as much because it wasn't as cool. Um, I want like an Avengers cartoon, like an actual full on Avengers cartoon in this animation style. Yeah. It doesn't necessarily even have to be connected to the MCU or what they could do is just do like the kind of what if thing where it's just, it's the same, it's the same characters that, you know, only we're exploring the Avengers in this universe now instead. And we're doing completely mm -hmm. new and different stories that are going to be more related to a lot of the stories that we could pick out from the comics that aren't necessarily going to, pop up in movies and stuff we could explore more villains and all that that's what i would love to see i don't know if they're going to do that because i i don't know if there's actually like still an avengers cartoon that's running right now but if they were to do a new avengers cartoon i would love to see it done in like this animation style yeah anyways uh i think that's gonna do it for our thoughts and feelings of what if for this week it was a gorgeous episode uh fantastic idea got super dark in a lot of places real quick and yeah uh i thought it was pretty satisfying i eager to see what they're gonna do next week but i don't know i don't think we know yet anyways i, I rated a baker's dozen watchers out of 10. I, I like the episode. Thumbs up. <laughs> I don't know. Anyways, moving on. Um, so, have you seen any new movies this week? I did, actually. And I did want to cover both of them real quick, give you my brief review on both of these, because these are actually two new movies that were released, and I know we're going to dive into box office numbers, too, and talk about them a little bit more there. But two movies that I watched this week uh, were new releases, uh, Reminiscence starring Hugh Jackman and Protégé starring Maggie Q. Uh, both movies, fascinating, fascinating little movies. Uh, I'll start with Reminiscence. It is a very okay movie. It is a movie that is, you know, it's got a fascinating concept. I'm not going to dive into like the plot and storyline, but uh, just real brief, it's, then he does it anyway. Real brief, it's a, uh, it's a, like a post-apocalyptic, the world has been flooded and all of humanity has is looking to their past now in order to move forward. They, they love nostalgia. It is a way of life. So there's uh, a guy, Hugh Jackman, and uh, uh, a woman he works with, which is uh, Sandy Newton. I believe that's the, the, that's, that's the name she was going by. I can't, I can't remember. Um, she just changed it to the, the actual, like her native spelling. Okay. She, stuck the, she stuck the W back in there. Okay, that's what I thought. I was like, oh, it's spelled differently this time. So the two of them are running a business essentially where people can come in and uh, dive back into their memories and stuff. And that kind of leads to a whole like mystery thriller involving Rebecca Ferguson and and kind of all this other stuff, which there's a lot there that I actually really enjoyed. I enjoyed what they were wanting to do with it, the direction they were wanting to head, head in with it. I think there was a lot of really like fun, like, mystery like what's going on and how's it happening and who's this person and what are they doing type stuff the problem is is that there was like a good chunk of this movie in places that just kind of dragged out a little too long like i'm thinking they probably could have cut even though this movie was actually under two hours they probably it felt like they could have still cut like 20 minutes off of it 
and kind of sped up the pace a little bit and that would have improved it a whole lot at least in terms of me and my like ADD brain wanting to kind of let's move on to the next thing let's stop dwelling like, on this we don't need to dwell on this anymore yeah yeah uh, if 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 i'm watching your movie and here's the thing it's available on hbo max so uh, f- first things first i do recommend that you check it out because it for those of you who have hbo max it's available to you to watch on hbo max you don't actually have to go to the theater to see this one so uh there's that but it's just it was just a little long in the tooth in places if that's an accurate uh, whatever they call it we above all people should not be ta- judging people's tooth size on this channel just saying well if in our far thank- comments or anything to go by then you're correct thank you youtube um, comments so it's it doesn't uh it, it doesn't end up you know high in a rating for me just because it was it was just okay. Uh, when the action and the pace does pick up, I really enjoyed myself with it. But it was just in a few places where that happened. I will say that Cliff Curtis does not get talked about enough. He is a fantastic. Uh, uh, just would they would you even refer to him as a B player at this point? He's a he's a fantastic supporting uh, he's, actor. He's he's one of like the top echelons of actors that you see in everything. He, he's he's in the category of like, where have I seen him before type of actor? That's yeah. it's that type of actor that you, you see him in like all these movies and you're like, what other movie did I see him in? Well, you just saw him in all the other movies that he's in, yeah. but and yeah, he, he's one of the top tier of those. And he's in a bunch, he's in a bunch of stuff, but yeah, he was in this fantastic supporting role. Um, as, as a whole, I would probably give this movie about five out of 10 stars. It's very like middle of the road for me. If the pacing was just picked up, this would have probably earned about eight stars. Uh, that, and if they explained a little bit more about why the world was the way it was, what actually happened, they just kind of did some throwaway. Some stuff happened, and that's all you really need to know, and let's move on. Kind of All the milk expired. It. That's what happened. Yeah. Exactly. All the milk expired, and that caused the waters to rise. The moon crashed. That's all you need to know. Move on. Now, if they kind of fix some of these some of these spots, the, this movie definitely would have rated higher for me. Uh, moving on real quick to The Protégé. Basic action film. Really fun. It's brought to you from the producers of John Wick. Uh, Maggie Q kicked so much ass in this movie. She was fantastic. Uh, can't believe she's 42. She looks young as mess still. Uh, like she's in her 20s kind of thing. But she's out here like moving and kicking ass like she is. Uh, Michael Keaton ton of fun to watch he was having a ton of fun in this movie and so is samuel L. jackson and in, in the in the places he was in here uh it was it, it, yeah it so this movie uh you you can watch the trailer and you feel like oh this looks like another movie that's gonna you know take place in the greater john wick universe not quite this is actually a much smaller it's more focused on maggie q and samuel L. jackson's characters and what they're doing it doesn't feel like there's like this bigger like realm of assassins happening that you get like say from like john wick but that being said it is a personal a more personal story and if you take it as such if you take it as just a you're going in for a super super easy to digest action film with a with a fun little story to it then this is this is a this is a pretty decent movie uh again like michael keaton ton of fun to watch in the role that he's in i think he was probably having the most fun out of anybody on screen because he was just getting to come in and just spout some lines that he looked like he was having, again, just so much fun uh, saying. But as far as the movie goes, it's it's nothing really big to write home about. It is, I, I'm going to repeat myself over again, it is just a basic, basic action movie. So if, that, if that's what you're into, if that's what, something that you're kind of looking for, then I definitely would recommend it. This one, this one definitely rates a little bit higher for me than uh, Reminiscence did. I give this one six out of ten. Um, so you know, it's this one I don't believe is actually available streaming anywhere. So if you do want to see it, you have to go check it out on in the actual theater or wait for it to come out for home viewing. But otherwise, yeah, nice, nice, pretty basic action film. Really fun. Go check it out if you want. Wait if you want doesn't really matter it's 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 nothing it's not it's not required viewing if that means anything so that's that's Uh, my thoughts 
Me, myself, I have not seen anything new over this past week. Uh, I do plan on changing that probably starting tomorrow. I'll probably uh, pick up a movie. <laughs> no. Busy on Tinder. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, I, I, I probably will watch a movie. There's a couple of movies that I have never seen that I really want to see. So they'll be a part of my countdown to seeing 2000 movies on my letterbox. Make sure you follow at Robert Adams MLP on my letterbox. You can see as I'm counting down almost at 2000, I think I got like another 11 movies to go or so. So we're about to round that up and get back to the 2000 countdown here for it. Uh, Anyways, let us jump into movie news. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. This is what's happening in your world tonight. (laughs) We apologize for the interruption. Back to you. <laughs> Back to <laughs> us. <laughs> Back to us. Well, as we begin the the movie news, as we do every week, Chris, how's that box office looking? It's looking fascinating, honestly. Uh, so as I've been talking about Protégé and Reminiscence here, those are two of the big releases that happened this last weekend. And here's the thing. I, I'm starting to see a trend here. And by starting, I mean, I've already noticed this trend. We've all noticed this trend. Right now, in order, in order to save theaters, I think you're going to have to, uh, you're going to have to look towards like the big blockbuster movies, big, big, like uh, tentpole type releases are the ones that you're really going to see saving the theaters right now. Those are the ones that people are going to go out for, uh, which is why number one in the box office this week, again, was Free Guy. Free Guy is is a blockbuster comedy. It is getting an incredible word of mouth. You are seeing this movie taking off. Again, It's so far it's my second favorite movie of the year. So it's definitely worth a watch to to check out. But it pulled in another 18 and a half million this weekend, which is, you know, again, for these times, fantastic. Great to see. It only had like about a 34% drop off. So that's, that's not too, too bad. Uh, Opening second is actually a new release this week, and that's the Paw Patrol movie, which, you know, is going to be huge with families. So if there's people out there who want to take their kids out to the theaters, get them out of the house, do something different. And they, you know, these families feel comfortable doing so and they know how to protect their kids amidst the uh, all the stuff still happening. You know, that movie hit number two, which is at about 13 million this weekend. So that's that's pretty cool. Uh, Jungle Cruise holding tight at number three. That again, we're talking about movies that also hit big with families, and there are still families going out to see movies. Uh, Don't Breathe Two is at number four, which is actually kind of shocking to me because that's I, yeah, it's Don't Breathe Two. Uh, Respect is holding in at number five, which is an interesting one to check out because that's the Aretha Franklin biopic, and uh, the audience for that may or may not be comfortable with going to a theater. They might want to hang back and that might be a movie that they would want to watch on a streaming service. Cause you know, these biopics don't necessarily like attract huge audiences theatrically all the time, unless it's probably closer to like around award season. Mm-hmm. Uh, number six, we got suicide squad. You know, there's been a lot, a large talk over that one. Uh, that one pulled in about another, another 3 million this, uh, this weekend in the box office. I don't believe these numbers are including, uh, HBO Max details. So again, you know, if you're looking at another like 54% drop off, then that movie is is probably hitting its stride right about now as in terms of how much it's going to be making from the box office consistently. Uh, we might see that one almost nearly drop off the top 10 next week completely. Uh, and then you have a th- a threefer coming in at seven, eight, and nine. We've got new releases: The Protege at seven. The Night House at eight and Reminiscence is at nine. Uh, these are movies that I can guarantee that all three of these are probably not going to be in the top 10 uh, after this next week as well. I know that we got Candyman is going to be released this next week. And that one's probably you're probably going to see that one at the number one or number two spot as that's a that's a long awaited uh, horror movie that's going to attract a big audience to it. And, and you know, we know word of mouth so far getting good word of mouth we know that horror movies are still playing uh well right now because a quiet place 2 did actually pretty pretty good and it's in its exclusive release into theaters when it came out so um and then at number 10 we have uh m night Shyamalan's old which is still hanging in that top 10 there which is <laughs> kind of surprising actually black widow bumped out of the top 10 black widow is no longer in the top 10 so you know we have uh we have a casualty in the Marvel universe in terms of a 
a movie that's holding. Uh, I do believe that you know next weekend when Shang Chi gets released, that I that one I believe will definitely be the number one movie, and we'll see. We'll kind of see that one hold on for a while too, especially since that's getting fantastic word of mouth already as well. So, yeah. box office is kind of interesting. Stuff's all over the place. Yeah. So we will continue to watch it grow with much with great interest. Um, as as we get like Sean Chi's going to come out. Yeah, that's gonna that's gonna easily take number one. Uh, as movies are coming back out again. Yeah. It this will be interesting to see how it goes. Um, Let's see. Let's go ahead while we're talking about that. So while we're talking about the box office, let's go ahead and move these around just a little bit. Uh, So we've gotten word that uh, No Time to Die still holding on to its its October release date. It ain't going nowhere. It's uh, like they're talking about movies being pushed back. Uh, It it is still hanging on for dear life because it's got no time to die. (laughs) Stupid pun. I know. Go ahead and bring up the uh, there he is. Thanks, Vision. Been a while since we've seen you, but yeah. Uh, anyways, uh, so that one's still holding on tight. Now, this one is interesting. So we talked about that Venom is getting pushed back to October as well. Uh, yeah. We received word this week that Venom is actually, or Venom Let There Be Carnage, uh, is getting pushed all the way to 2022. Which that led us to an interesting discussion real quick before we move on, yeah. which was why would it get pushed to 2022? And the thought there was, okay, is the studio concerned about the Delta variant flying around still? Uh, The other thought I had was that, hey, look at uh, all the other releases in October and the rest of this year. And Sony's not going to move Spider-Man. So, you know, there's a whole, there's just a mess of movies coming out at the tail end of this year. It makes sense. You know, maybe we want to try to pull in a big box office for this one. So let's move it to a time when we can pull in a big box office. Made sense to me. Yeah, that's your that's your regular like old fashioned. We're gonna release a movie on this weekend, and then Marvel's Avengers Endgame decides to release on that same weekend. You're like, well, I guess I'll be the one to move because we're not gonna. No one's gonna be able to tell Endgame. No, you can't release this weekend. I'm releasing this weekend. No, who cares? Exactly. So yeah, uh, which is weird because I would think like Venom. Venom did decently in the box office. It's got a it's got a good right. fan following. I wouldn't think it needed to move. Well, neither did Sony, and Sony reaffirmed. I guess it was today. It was re- today they reaffirmed. No, it's still coming out in October. Who told you it was going to twenty twenty two? That's a crazy person. Don't listen to them. So it's still coming out in October as of right now. Which is going to be funny when they announce like tomorrow or like even the next day. No, no, no. We actually are going to push it back to 2022 for Make all the reasons mind. that you just said. Yeah. They're going to end up probably doing something like that. But uh, I think still ho- hoping that Venom 2 comes out soon because I want to see this movie. Yeah. And I'm also tired of seeing the trailer. Uh, I think that the situation is most of these studios now are like, you know what? Let's just, we're not waiting any longer. Let's just get these movies out. Uh, people are starting to get vaccinated. There are people out there who are vaccinated. They're, they're starting to release, you know, Hey, come get your, come get your third booster real quick. That way, you know, you're protected come winter time, uh, when this kind of stuff, you know, flares up even more. So they're just like, Hey, people are, people are getting their, their shots. The, the ones who are paying attention anyway, are, are getting their shots and, you know, studios are like, good enough. Let's start getting these things out. So I don't think, I don't think we're honestly going to be seeing any more, uh, any more pushback for a lot of these, a lot of these movies. So that's, that's some good news anyway, in terms of like studios and and their release schedules. Uh, That being said though, that a lot of these studios are still planning like their major year events. uh, Like the ones we had last year, of course you had the comic con at home. We had the DC fandom event, uh, which that one was fantastic. Uh, So we are still planning on these happening this year as well, we've got D23 and another Disney, like Disney Plus one like they did last year, which that one was phenomenal with all of its updates too. So hopefully those are all going to be big. But we got a newbie, a newbie in the mix. Uh, Netflix is joining the the fan virtual event game by hosting Netflix, ta 
a global fan event on the September. It, 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 so it's an onomatopoeia of the sound of the Netflix logo. Dun dum. Dun dum. Oh. Dun dum. Yeah. Oh, so, I thought this was just like a uh, like a little uh, event that's uh, hosted by Alan Tudyk. Too dumb. That joke was too dumb. Yeah, move on. Uh, anyways, so we're going to continue the show. Um, and yeah, so Netflix is going to do this now. Here's the thing. Netflix, I feel like I haven't heard too much of Netflix lately. Like when you're talking about the streaming wars and everything, they've seemed to kind of like have died down a bit. Like I hear more of Disney and HBO Max because both of those have been making big, huge noise over this yeah. past year with their day and date streaming and premier accesses. Yep. Uh, not too much from uh, Netflix. Netflix has been pushing like a lot of shows, a lot of their more popular shows and movies back, which was weird. But uh, this is going to be a big, huge event for them. Uh, and I'll, they actually have stuff to cover. When you heard about this, did you have any interest in what they could be talking about? Uh, it, it is fascinating uh, somewhat because they're while I'm typically not like invested in a lot of like Netflix original stuff. Um they have they they do have a a knack for producing some really good movies now especially as they've been pushing for more and more award contention films and whatnot to try to make sure that their name is one that you recognize when it comes to you know movies that are are worth your time to watch and whatnot stories that are you know worth watching uh the other thing though is that you know, they do have a lot, a lot, a lot of original series, TV shows and whatnot. And that's kind of one of Netflix's big pushes since uh, they moved away from necessarily having a lot of like other content as other studios have had their own streaming services and been pulling all of their content back into their own homes. Uh, one of the things I'm, I'm fasc would be fascinated to see here would actually be uh, the next season of Stranger Things being represented because that's been a big show that I've been like into all these last the last few years whenever they're able to produce a season because uh i know that they were supposed to be working on it last year and it didn't happen so that's that's what has my interest here is that kind of thing like where where's you know your stranger things season four is where's your netflix original movies that are going to be the ones to watch essentially that's what would have my interest here at this oh also they've been rumored and talking about doing a live action Pokemon series. So, you know, that's got my interest as well. That's that would be kind of cool, especially if it falls back the same way that they did the uh, detective Pikachu movie. If it's like the same studio and all the same creatives involved in that, that would be gorgeous. You know, I've uh, always I know. loved, I've always <laughs> loved playing Pokemon. I always love playing Pokemon. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, anyway. So I know that their their flagship ones that they're definitely going to be advertising like come watch this event they're going they are going to have like an entire event around uh Stranger Things 4 it looks like uh and then uh, I'm also venturing a guess that there will probably be a, a lot of like hullabaloo or hoopla or whatever like 1920s word you want to use to describe a lot this. Of uh, over here. A lot of hoopla coming down on the corner. Right they've, there. they've got this live action uh, cowboy bebop show oh, that's yeah, going to be yeah. coming out. Uh, that is one of those like very well beloved anime cartoons. And like seeing the live action, like I'm not a big anime fan, but like I saw the image of this and my first thought was like, they've got John Cho, MILF guy number two. To play like this lead assassin guy, I was like, it looks really good. It looks like it it could actually be like pretty interesting. So, yeah, but. I here's the thing: anime as well has not been my big strong suit either. So, uh, the hearing hearing from people who have watched Cowboy Bebop who know that property and them saying this actually looks pretty good, uh, design wise of the characters, they're saying this looks they they're they're doing pretty good. And then uh, seeing what I've seen from like the design of the characters, it does look mm -hmm. interesting. And uh, I know that, that that's a whole world and a whole like story that's this is completely fascinating for a lot of people. So it could it could be interesting to, to check out when it comes out. 
Yeah. Uh, this past week, we also had another like fan event. There was the CinemaCon. Uh, a lot of this, we've like some movies were premiered at CinemaCon early, it's like Ghostbusters Afterlife. Uh, also getting good word of mouth so far. So uh, nice to hear that. But they also premiered the first trailer and made the announcement of the official title of the fourth Matrix movie, calling it The Matrix Resurrections. Um, yeah, and it's kind of interesting. They were talking about like what was actually shown in the trailer, uh, as if it looks like Neo and Trinity are like out of the matrix. Now they've completely forgot everything. They don't even recognize each other. Um, and now for some weird reason, they're having to like get pulled back into the matrix and remember who they are, whatnot. Just, just when I was I, I, don't, I don't know if this will make for an intriguing story. Um, those of you who've seen the first one and not seen the other two, you probably have no idea what how that would be good or bad. Uh, but if you've seen the other two, you would be like, uh, you'd probably be right to believe eh, I'm going to be very hesitant on this. Yeah. This sounds like we're just trying to milk this franchise again, and I have no idea if it's actually going to be any good. But since that, since there is a trailer that has been made, I would assume that that trailer is going to be released here shortly. I believe this movie is supposed to come out in December, and it's going to be another one of those movies that's going to get released day and date with HBO Max. So yep. that will be interesting. Matrix Resurrections. That's a weird name, but it fits within the, I guess, the revolutions and revelations reloaded. and reloaded and whatever it's called. Um, and the Animatrix. Wait. Yeah, the Animatrix was actually pretty good. That one I did like. Yeah. But uh, like, so, so, so Neo and Trinity are like, just when we thought we were out, we got we they pulled us back in. I butchered that line. Whatever. I tried to do that joke earlier, but you ran over me. So just move on. <laughs> no, I want to sit here and stew in this. Nah. We don't have time. Uh, and then the other thing that we got <laughs> news about this week is that Ironheart Riri Williams will make her first appearance in. Black Panther Wakanda forever. So we're going to see this. I believe she's supposed to be like in a TV show. Yep. I believe a Marvel TV TV show show coming. Yep. Yeah. But we're going to see her first in the Black Panther movie. So this is going to be interesting. Uh, Like to see what they do with her. I wonder if it's going to be like something where she's like working with Shiri or something on, on stuff. And then she decides to create her own Iron Man armor. Who knows? I mean, here's the thing. I think this is a smart move, smart idea to Mm -hmm. introduce a TV show character in a movie because majority of general audiences are flocking towards the MCU movies. They, that is where they go. Uh, I always like to use the example of our, our parents. They are, while they are getting up there in age, they are more inclined to just watch the movies. They're not trying to dive into Disney plus shows or anything. If you look at that being the statistic for general audiences, they're going to go see, you know, Black Panther Wakanda forever, get introduced to a new character, and then they're going to hear the news. This character that you got introduced to and love in this movie is having its own TV show, is having their own TV show. And that, I think, is is a strong selling point for, for you know, a lot of these shows going forward is, oh, I saw this character in the movie. I enjoyed that character. That character was a lot of fun in the movie. I do want to see a TV show with this person and everything that they're going to do with them. So I think this is a smart idea. I think this is a really smart idea. Yeah. So that's going to lead us into our main topic for tonight. Uh, So what we're going to do with this, uh, there's a couple places. If y'all all all saw this uh, Spider-Man No Way Home trailer, uh, again, we're about to dive into this. If you do not want to know anything about this trailer, if you don't want to be spoiled, you want to go into this movie completely blind, then thank you for watching tonight. We will see y'all later. Make sure you comment down below, hit that like button and subscribe to <laughs> us. We will see y'all make sure you follow us, Twitter, Instagram, all those things. We will see y'all later. Cause now we are going to dive into some Spider-Man stuff. Uh, first thing I want to do with this is we're not going to replay the trailer just because very likely the stream would get shut down immediately if we actually played it. So yeah. what we're going to do is we're going to do a quick uh, screen shift here and something like this. There we go. And let me see how this is. Okay. 
So what we're going to do is I'm going to like kind of just scrub through it, go to like certain places that I know that there's some interest in. Um, one of which would be this like first shot here. Um, like, first of all, l before we even dive into this, this was a fantastic trailer. A lot of the stuff they showed in here, a lot of secrets, a lot of theories. Uh, I've seen like a lot of people like trying to guess what's happening and what's going on. Uh, I absolutely love it because a lot of these really do make sense coupled with what we've already heard of what this movie's about. Uh, so we're going to see how like some of this can really, really connect to the giant Marvel cinematic universe and everything yeah. that they're crazily doing. Uh, for example, in this one, this image here, while Peter and MJ are resting on a roof away from, I guessing all the reporters and everyone trying to hound after them, you see the graffiti on the wall. You do have the graffiti straight behind them. It looks like it says Ditko as in yeah. Steve Get Ditko, one of the co-creators of Spider-Man. So nice little Easter egg there. Um, yeah, sorry I guys, we're this. about we're I about to get super nerdy. <laughs> yeah, I love this also, like the us uh, seeing the relationship between these two and just you know how they uh, are relating to each other. So, uh, I I really like seeing that kind of explored further. Still, yeah. Uh, the next thing I want to jump to here is let's go to the interrogation. So we see yes, turn off ads. Uh, we see that uh, Peter is handcuffed here, which, I mean, uh, technically those handcuffs wouldn't do jack to him. Uh, he would still be able to break out of that, bust out yeah. of those handcuffs. So uh, this really is not a big deal. So he's he seems to be cooperating. Uh, but what I like is, uh, let's see, where is it at? Might have to, there. So we get what looks Incredible. like could be potentially a lawyer here. Uh, slamming papers down. Of course, everyone and their mom knows that there's a very good chance that we're going to see Charlie Cox's uh, Matt Murdock slash Daredevil in this movie and that he will be representing Peter Parker as he typically does in the comics and in the 90s cartoon. He's heavily rumored. So that's actually one of the things I want to see most is I want to see them bring both Charlie Cox and Vincent D'Onofrio back into the the Marvel universe fold. I loved everybody else, like the, <laughs> how they played the characters in those Netflix shows. But these are the two that I'm most interested in seeing reprise their roles. I, I think that that is why I want this to be Charlie Cox, because that means if we get Charlie Cox, that means we're going to get Vincent D'Onofrio as Kingpin. Yep. And his Kingpin was so good, was yeah. perfect, was absolutely what I would want alive. The Michael Clark Duncan from the 2003 live action Daredevil wasn't bad. The problem I had with him uh, is not the obvious problem. Get that out of your head. Stop it. The problem I have with him is he seemed to be very self-contained within that movie. I didn't get the feeling that he was this mega super like mobster uh, crime boss. He, he, he just felt really niche in his little his little world that he was in and that like very little had he, he had no connections to anyone else. He didn't affect anyone else's lives and feelings except for the direct people that he killed. So. Uh, this one, at least in the Daredevil TV show, the Vincent D'Onofrio Kingpin seemed much larger, uh, not physically, but I mean, he still had a good uh, presence on screen. Yeah. Um, so yeah, definitely hoping to see if we get uh, if we get Charlie Cox in this as well. Uh, I'm trying to see what else we have. And those of y'all watching, if there were, yeah. if y'all saw anything that we haven't, that we're not catching or whatever, let us know so we can go back and catch it because I want to know. <laughs> Especially also if you know where the time code is in the video and you can just tell us the time code, we can actually like just go straight to that, that image. So yeah, if there's anything, you know, you want to highlight that we don't hit here, then let us know in the chat while we're going. Uh, basically around here, we get to see, like the people kind of turning on him, which is funny because there's another shot in this trailer where uh, Peter is or Spider-Man is in the crowd and everyone seems to be OK. But this one looks like they're really out there protesting. Like you get this guy here in the foreground, looks like he's got his hands cupped over his mouth as if he's like booing. Uh, and then we cut to this where we see them walking and it looks like they're all being brought into interrogation or something. Uh, and then <laughs> this person went, jumped to the straight extreme of calling uh, Peter a devil in disguise. Look out. He's Mephisto. We knew that joke was coming. 
Yeah, but I mean, this is what I feel like. This is a great example of how I feel like people just operate anyways. You hear like one little thing or you see one little thing and everyone just jumps to the straight conclusion. For example, I work for a cable company. If your cable goes out, everyone goes straight to the, well, there must be an outage and it's the cable company's fault. Not knowing there's like thousands of reasons why your cable goes out. And most of the time, it's not your cable company's fault. That's enough of my soapbox. This one is that people just heard that uh, Peter Parker is apparently responsible for killing Mysterio, and now we get someone that's going straight to, well, he's the devil. Like, no, like, he, first of all, he might not have actually killed Mysterio. Second of all, it may be an accident if he did, or he might be just so a really good kid. What, what's happening here is that all people hear in the news was that Spider-Man killed a, someone that they've been seeing as a hero. So if you see that someone kills a hero, then your first thought is going to be, okay, well, that person who killed the hero must be evil. Not realizing that Mysterio was the one who was evil and Spider-Man was actually a good guy and didn't actually kill him. Mm -hmm. uh, I also love the uh, the sign that's in the background. It's kind of hard to read it because it's, like, it's a little blurry, but uh, it just says he's a menace, which is like J. Jonah Jameson's like favorite phrase to talk about Spider-Man with. Uh, my question, though, is do we see anybody holding up a dummy saying, this is Mr. Mutant in this crowd? Mr. Mutant, yeah. That's funny. It's a deep um, X-Men reference for you guys playing at home. Yeah. Uh, so we've got... There is... Uh, let me see. Mm -hmm. So we got this shot of, the, of him walking through school. Now apparently he's like the school like celebrity. The one thing I like about this is the TV in the upper corner. You get uh, Betty Brant is still out there. Apparently it looks like she's outside of the school uh, reporting. So I'm guessing Peter Parker just had already walked past her to mm -hmm. walk into school. So she's still standing out there talking about how the school and everyone is adjusting to Peter Parker being Spider-Man. Uh, I, I like that because I feel like that's going to be what really helps her get a job with the Daily Bugle in this, uh, which is what she's known for in the comics. Uh, let's see. What else do we got in here? Uh, let's get to this. Let's uh, let's jump into a little bit of uh, theory here with this one, because this seems to have gotten a lot of people questioning different things on the Internet. Um, Marvel first, Studios I'll, logo. So notice that the Sanctum Centaurum is perfectly fine. The logo is up there, the, the logo, famous logo window of it. Uh, and then we get the shot of uh, Peter comes in, and it's uh, Winter Wonderland. You even have this dude on the left that's sitting there, like, trying to scoop up all the snow. Why? Why is it snowing in the Sanctum Centaurum? And the other question is, if the snow doesn't belong there, why can't Doctor Strange just do a spell real quick that just takes care of it? Yeah. <laughs> Spiliamas, get out of here, snow, or whatever Spiliamas does. I like Marvel. <laughs> Not so well known on the Harry Potters. Oh, you poor thing. You tried. You tried. Yeah, I try. But yeah, where did the snow come from? Because I know everyone was saying, like, you mean to tell me that he has yet to fix the, the roof or the ceiling of the Sanctum Centaurum since Hulk fell through it? And so this is all snow that just happened to land in New York and it just came through that hole and doused the entire Sanctum? Sad. It's been five years and that, that roof did not get fixed. Yeah, it's a lot of snow. Uh, no, I believe it's something else. Like maybe the Wi-Fi connection to his Nest thermostat probably kicked out and it just cranked straight down to zero and just created a whole bunch of snow and moisture in the air. And that's what he's got. I, those Internet of Things devices, I don't trust them. They just they look good on paper, but I don't know if they'll work for light for the long haul. So anyways, again, soapbox done. Um. Yeah, I have no idea what's causing this. Obviously, he doesn't want it there because there's someone trying to shovel it away. But yeah, to your point, why doesn't he just like magical spell them away? I mean, some kind of like magic spell that raises the heat in there and melts it all away. And then some magic spell that evaporates the water. I mean, it's not that hard. But I mean, we look at Doctor Strange here and he's sitting there wearing he's got his like Doctor Strange cape, but he's sitting there just wearing like. Uh, like a parka with a hoodie. He's wearing him. a Peter parka. Huh? Eh? Eh? No? Oh, okay. 
yeah so he's got a parka with a hoodie underneath and he's just chilling there with the fireplace and he's got his coffee are you, are you good you you're you gonna be good okay go and uh real quick i love this mug i know people have been highlighting this on the internet uh, yeah. over the last couple of days uh i don't i can't like it's like I don't give a fox little fox image. It says oh, oh, oh for fox sake. Oh for fox sake. Yeah, that's it. Uh, yeah, that's a fantastic mug. Uh, you know that's being sold somewhere, and the the uh, the, <laughs> the sales on that is about to like skyrocket. Yeah, uh, that that is a nice little nod. I don't know if it was intentional, but the whole like talking about the Disney Fox merger and how long and drawn out that was. Uh, I believe that it's a. Uh, press the digitation vernon why why you can't put long words in your comments for us to read we can't do it or at no, least speak i can't for yourself. speak for yourself yeah yeah um so you were talking about like why can't they like heat it up i mean he's got a fire in the fireplace so again i don't know fire with uh, magic there so that leads me to what else seems to be the possible um uh, we'll have to get to it i guess here in a second well could skip forward here uh what people believe is that this isn't uh dr strange at all uh given this nice little think that little wink there uh this, that it it's not dr strange a lot of people are rumoring that this could potentially be loki who is familiar with all of the this multiverse thing now. And therefore, he, since it's not Doctor Strange, it's Loki, he's not well-versed in causing all of those magic spells, so he wouldn't be able to get rid of the snow. I haven't heard the uh, the Loki idea yet, just that this this Doctor Strange might be somebody else. Also, I mean, we, we have a feeling it's not our Doctor Strange that we know and love, because... Uh, he was not listening to Wong as Wong was leaving. And we know at this point he's not as conceited as he once was. And I think that he would listen to Wong in this situation. I but, do like that Wong is packing his bags here and he's leaving to go fight Abomination in the Shang-Chi movie. So it's a nice little, now we know like where Wong left and now why he pops up. Wong is doing a very good job of popping up in all of these Marvel trailers uh, and the trailers are just continuing the legend of Wong at this point. But yeah, so I hear Loki, I uh, like that is Agatha all along. I mean, it could be, it could very well be Agatha popping up in the main MCU. Now that would be interesting as well. Uh, okay. Of course you do also, you do have very strongly the suspicion of, Doctor Strange here being replaced by Mephisto, not meant as a joke this time. That is a possibility, and we'll dive into why here in a second. Uh, the only other thing I want to touch upon out of this this scene here is that when Peter uh, walks up to him, he refers to Doctor Strange as Sir, in which that's kind of a callback to when they met in Infinity War. Uh, that there was a whole confusion over the names. Like I'm Dr. Strange. Oh, we're using our makeup made up names. I'm Spider-Man. So, uh, I like that, that little back and forth there for that. Yeah. Um, then we see that they are going down and that Dr. Strange here is attempting to, to do a spell that would erase everyone's memory of Peter Parker being Spider-Man. Yeah. This is why, I referenced that this could be potentially Mephisto because if you're familiar with the comics, this was a storyline in the comics where uh, after the civil war story in the comics, everyone knew that Spider-Man was Peter Parker. He went to Mephisto, the the version of the devil of Satan in the, in, in the Marvel universe Making a and the devil and that Mephisto erased everyone's memory of him being Peter Parker, but it also kind of shifted things and kind of made its own what if universe within the main universe. Uh, mm -hmm. It caused uh, Peter Parker and Mary Jane to not be married anymore. Uh, it eventually, uh, I can't remember 100% if it caused Aunt May to die or if the going back, if Aunt May died before Mephisto got involved and Mephisto brings her back as well. Uh, but yeah, 
Uh, kind of like Garth saying here too. Yeah. One more day, brand new day when Peter Parker made a deal with Mephisto. So there's also another like strong suspicion that, uh, <laughs> that, uh, Dr. Strange may be Mephisto. Yeah. <laughs> Robert saying everything I type in the chat mm, let's test this. Well, no, I'm, I actually just read that one. No, I'm not going to say that one, Garth. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so we've got we've got a couple other shots in here some of these might not necessarily oh yeah we've got the peter parker won't shut up so apparently as this trailer is showing us his like talking or whatever is uh messing everything up and causing the multiverse to happen we also it's kind of have a suspicion so. We also have the suspicion that, again, this might be Loki as Doctor Strange. And again, Loki doesn't know how to do magic, so Loki's just screwing it up himself, potentially. Uh, there is something in here I liked. And I gotta, I'm gotta, i going to have to play this for a second because be I want to find... I know. I want to find the, the shot of it because I haven't seen anyone else talk about this. Um... It's in this where you see take, all the, the take the video the off the screen and play it off screen. Well, I'm just needing the freeze frame. So in this, so you get these, which obviously the colors here look like that they are probably a reference to the Infinity Stones. There's a shot in here, and I don't know how possible it's going to be on YouTube um, because we can't really see frame by frames on this. But there's a shot where it has a silhouette. Of what look there it is. The, that's kind of it. Uh, it's starting to fade away, but you can kind of see uh, around. You see what looks like a silhouette of some supernatural being or something. Sure. I'm going to guess the Watcher. I have a feeling that this might be a nice reference. Again, we've only seen the Watcher so far in What If, in which he's been, for the most part, a silhouette. I believe that this might be a reference to that because it would make sense that we're diving into the multiverse. The Watcher may be involved. Again, just watching, not actually uh, interacting or having anything to do with it. But yeah, that would be what I would suspect. And again, I haven't, I, seen, I haven't seen anyone else say this, though. Is that, that feels a little bit of a stretch, but we can move on. I think it's one of those, like, it's just going to pop up and then, like, no one's really meant to catch it and to really talking about it. It's just meant to pop up and then you just continue on. Uh, kind of like, uh, what was it, the Silver Surfer Fantastic Four movie. We got the the silhouette of Galactus in the cloud. It was supposed to be a nice little nod and you just continue moving on. It's not meant to grow or anything. So, um. So they do the spell. We got a bunch of like cool sci-fi stuff. Yeah, we get a reference back to like the first Doctor Strange movie with the city going all Inception-y. Um, so yeah, it starts folding in on itself. We get the uh, the lightning here. So we see a Daily Bugle van. You get the yellow lightning, which we have to guess is coming from electro who again is going to be more yellow and not blue this time around uh but we don't get an actual glimpse of him unfortunately mm -hmm. uh let me see try to see if there's anything else i i'm interested in this uh i'm kind of curious as to what's going on here we get what looks like what I originally was guessing was just uh, Doctor Strange and Peter Parker on these trains, uh, but it's starting to look more like they're actually fighting each other. It's hard to tell because, I mean, yeah, there, it looks like he could be doing some kind of antagonistic work here, but they also could be having to manipulate stuff in order to get somewhere to do something and they have to work together here. And this is Dr. Strange using his powers while they're working together, or maybe they're both fighting somebody else completely different. And who knows there's, there's any number of reasons. I mean, the thing about this trailer is that there's so much going on in it and anything could be happening at any given point. So it, all these thoughts and theories are just that thoughts and theories until 
obviously we see the movie or see a second trailer that explains or expounds on some of this. Well, I like this also for the fact that we already know that Alfred Molina is returning as Doc Ock. And this is a nice reference to one of the best uh, fight scenes in a comic book movie was the Spider-Man Doc Ock fight on the train in Spider-Man 2. So a nice little reference to that. Uh, this is the other one that I'm trying to figure out. This is the famous shot that everybody, uh, including us, uh, used as their thumbnail for the trailer reaction video. Uh, but the one thing that none of us have any idea is what the hell is that thing that Spider-Man is holding? It Some looks box. like a gold box that's got chia seeds growing all over it. <laughs> Ch -ch chia pet seeds. It's it's a mother box. You're going to see uh, Steppenwolf come in here in a second. No. Mother! Mother! Yeah. yeah. Um, so I don't know, like, did Spider-Man, is this something that, like, Spider-Man stole this box from Doctor Strange because it definitely looks like something that Strange would have in his house. Uh, and it, in this case, Doctor Strange is trying to stop him by doing the whole astral plane, separating his body from his astral self. Um, is that really it? The orb of Agamotto? So I wasn't... <laughs> I know of the eye of Ag Agamotto, which is not... A, an infinity stone in the comics they just did that for the movies but uh yeah i'm not sure what the orb of agamotto is so you mean kind of curious box? as to what oh, that Warren. is yeah it's not a mother box uh and then get we get Avengers versus justice league thing yeah we get the return of the iron spider costume which we haven't seen since in game yeah, because he didn't use this. He couldn't pack the Iron Spider suit uh, with him when he went to Europe in Far From Home. So nice to see that this suit's coming back. And actually, I really like this suit. Uh, but then we also get... Oh, yeah, we get this shot of Happy. Like, who's after Happy now? Bunch of people with their laser guns pointed at him right now. Yeah. Interesting. And then there is... I don't know where this is at. It's somewhere around here, I believe. This might be one where you have to like actually play. Yeah. Like, what is this behind Peter? Everyone yeah, online seems to be saying that it is the lizard. Because, yeah, if there's a, there's a certain point. Yeah, just stop it. That's fine. There's a certain point that you can <laughs> stop it at. And if you... Uh, if you raise the the shadows, you lighten up the image, mm -hmm. uh, then you can see like a silhouette of a big creature with a tail. Some people are saying uh, lizard. Other people are saying, "Oh, Venom's going to be in this." Which I'm not. Sold Venom on doesn't either. have a tail. <laughs> exactly. <clears throat> I noticed. I know. I, yes, that's fine. Um, it's it's. It, it could be anything. It could be anyone. There's no clear, like so many people are just like, Oh, it for sure is this. And it's like, Oh, we don't actually know. Cause there's been no talk as to whether or not Reese Ephens is going to be a part of this movie or not. So, you know, it's, it's up in the air as terms of like, is lizard a part of this? How many villains from prior movies are actually going to show up? We get kind of an idea of at least a few in this. So I don't know if lizards part of this or not. That remains to be seen. Yeah. Uh, and then, luckily, this was the next uh, shot that I wanted to get off of this was the lightning and all that sand. So are we referencing a possible fight between Electro and Sandman in this? I mean, how many villains are they shoving into this movie? Because at this point, this is insane. <laughs> it just feels like, once again, you know, this, Sony's in charge of this. We had Spider-Man 3 with, like, three villains. We had Amazing Spider-Man 2 had... How many villains in it? You know, like Electro and and Green Goblin, uh -huh. ish, in uh, in that one. Uh, yeah, yes, <laughs> six. <laughs> exactly, Sinister Six. Um, They're all kind of sinister, aren't they? Yeah. Real quick, this is actually what I was thinking: is it could be instead of Lizard, it could be Scorpion, who we've seen Matt Gargan in the uh, home movie so far, but he hasn't. Uh, he hasn't popped up yet in the actual like scorpion outfit. So that could be a possibility as well. But yeah, uh, I don't know. I'm not sold on like lizard or Sandman just quite yet. I am trying to see. I'm There's doing like quick. 
what you were talking about with like raising the exposure and stuff on it to see exactly it's, what's in there. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah, I really can't tell. Yeah, let's let's move it along to the next uh, the next shot. There. Okay. Now I I do actually see that creature that's behind them. Um, it's not venom. No, it's not. I don't it, think it swipes at him and leaves like some kind of like an energy ring around. So that's what you see is the that energy. Uh, I don't know. It's it's gonna be it's gonna be kind of weird. I'd have to like study it a little bit more, but yeah. Uh, and then of course there's also the the next shot as this with the the cackling of Green Goblin behind there, and it, which sounds like the Willem Dafoe Green Goblin. There's uh, something so obviously here, actually, he's back. <laughs> there's something in here that I did want to talk about. Yeah, you hear the cackling um, right after this. Before we get to the uh, essentially the money shot of the trailer, the the big the big shot. It's that uh, you hear the "Be careful what you wish for," Parker. Um, do we know who says that based on that voice? Because I know I think some people are saying that sounds like Green Goblin. Some people are saying you know it could be this person, or that person. I. It, part of it sounds like it could be uh, Doctor Strange saying that. Uh, kind of like, a, be careful what you wish for, Parker. But he, mm -hmm. saying Parker is kind of a, sounds like a villainous thing. Like, hey, Parker, kind of kind of a thing. Uh, for me, it also could sound like uh, Jake Gyllenhaal in a more gravelly, upset-sounding voice. Have we have confirmed yet that Jake Gyllenhaal's back is Mysterio? Because I still believe that he isn't dead. Yeah, wow. I don't believe he's dead either, um, but I don't know if it's been 100% absolutely officially confirmed. I think it's just one of those we all are just kind of assuming that he's a part of it. So, Yeah, so that, that remains to be seen as to who said that line, whose voice is that that we hear, because it doesn't sound like Willem Dafoe to me. Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, moving well, on from bomb, this... Though. Yeah, I, I love the fact it's the exact pumpkin bomb from from the first Spider-Man movie. Yeah. Um. So moving on, yeah. Then you get the the big uh, money shot with the tentacles, and then yeah, then you get the return of Alfred Molina's Hello, Doc Ock. Uh, here's what's interesting here, and again, another theor theorizing. The trailer makes it look like he is looking at Tom Holland because right after this, you get the next shot is that you get the Tom Holland, Peter Parker on the car and quickly changes into the Spider-Man costume. The thing is, is this is not the same location. I mean, it's all nice and sunny here and it's all dark and like in gamey. Even <laughs> yeah. yeah, even look at the background there through the through the smoke that you can tell. I see yeah. trees and buildings and stuff, but if you look at where Peter's at, Peter's on a highway. It, let's look at go back to where the tentacle popped out. Yeah, that I feel like it might be in the same. The tentacle, the tentacle, and Doc Ock are in the same place. We have a car turned over here. So, do does, does is this the highway? Is this also the highway? Uh, it may be it the highway, be. but but I don't think it's at the same exact time. Yeah, it doesn't necessarily look like that. You know where Doc Ock is saying "Hello, Peter," and then where we see Peter suiting up. That these are part of the same exact scene, for sure. I know that so, others have been talking about this online. I, I one of the places I heard first and foremost, I will credit Koi Jandro for kind of bringing this up and saying this is that. There's some there's some crafty editing happening in this trailer where he's saying hello Peter, but he might not be talking to the Tom Holland Peter Parker. That was my theory that I was that I was thinking with this as well is the trailer makes it look like he's talking to Tom Holland's Peter Parker, but common sense it, he's not going to know what Tom Holland's Peter Parker look he's not going to see him and recognize him as Peter Parker. He's going to see him and recognize him as just another person. And so, he's already suited up as Spider-Man. That's the only thing. In which case, uh, he'll, just he'll just naturally assume that that's Peter Parker because it's a Spider-Man. Yeah, and, and that might be still like a bit of a connection, a weird connection to draw 
on that um, just because you might not necessarily you might not necessarily know that this spider that Spider Man is always Peter Parker. We've had multiple Spider Men in the comics. It well, could be Ben Riley. <laughs> he, has nothing, he has nothing else to go by, though. All he knows yeah, is that Spider-Man yeah, yeah. is Peter But Parker. that's what I say. It still could be really weird. So depending on what exactly happens, I believe, yes, that he's actually talking to the Tobey Maguire Peter Parker because that's what? the one that he recognizes. Uh, again, after watching this trailer multiple times, I, without a doubt, I firmly believe that both Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield are both in this movie as well. Uh, so yeah, it's just it's just opening this up to what has now been renamed, I believe, to the Sony's Spider-Man universe. They had like some other like really really long and obscene type of name, and they just shortened it down to that, which so makes a little bit more sense. Universe of Marvel characters or something like that. Yeah, there was there were some other words, and there was like about like ten words too long to describe what this is, but um. Yeah, this is essentially again like we were. Ta- I believe we talked about this before. This is encompassing all of the Spider-Man movies, so it's therefore making all of the Spider-Man movies canon within the MCU, which is For a the most fascinating, part. fascinating concept. Mm-hmm. So can't wait to see Hugh Jackman back as Wolverine to encompass all the X-Men movies as well from Fox. So not gonna, not gonna happen. Um, we'll see. Not gonna happen. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I, again, I firmly believe he's talking to Tobey Maguire here, so that's why that's why he recognizes him. Yeah, uh, I believe that's roughly about it. I'm excited though because you got this image right here uh, that we uh, that we got PlayStation Five. Go buy your PlayStation Five, guys. Yeah, that we we got that image of the Marvel Studios president Alfred Molina. Uh, just hanging out and, and threatening Peter Parker. That joke will never get old, and I will beat it into the ground until the day I die. Um, this looks this looks interesting, though. There's a lot of thoughts, a lot of theories. You brought up Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire. Yes, I said it, I believe, in our trailer reaction, which you can check out on our channel. We did do a trailer reaction. No, we're not making any money from it. Thank you, Sony Pictures. But you can still check it out. Give it the views and the love, because we would love that. But as I said in that trailer reaction, I do believe that uh, I would put money I don't own on Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire both being a part of this movie for sure. It's dang near confirmed, especially with all like the uh, all the behind the scenes near the set. Like, oh, Andrew Garfield's staying at a hotel that was near the set and he ordered food and oh, he got caught. And he's like, no, I'm not part of it. Uh, no, he's part of it. They're all they're both part of it. What's what's the joke that you have about the three controllers? <laughs> it's like the three seashells. Yeah, there's a white one, a red one, and a black one. They all have like blue highlights and black highlights, uh, and they're Spider-Man controllers. Aha! Yeah. Brand con- connectivity, synergy. Yeah, Syner- synergy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they represent the three powerful magic: Wanda, Loki, and Doctor Strange, controlling things. I mean, that'd be cool if like the isn't there there's a white one if the white one was green that would be kind of cool yeah well maybe i don't know who knows um anyways i think that's it for the easter eggs and suspicions and theories about that trailer um eager to see another one i'm pretty sure we will get another one that's gonna tease a lot more i would expect the next trailer we will see electro uh we'll probably see very likely we'll see vulture and And or mysterio and i believe the next trailer will end on garfield and or mcguire that will be the the last note of the trailer the big oh you need some help there Peter? Yeah, uh, I'll be honest. I actually would like to see if it ends with that. I want to see like the Tom Holland Peter like stuck, like say there on that highway, and you see like the two other Spider Man hands that are in their distinctive costumes, and you see them from like the back, and yeah, you hear one of their voices. Uh, do you need help? We can help you. We're the friendly neighborhood type, and then that's yeah. all you get. Like you don't even see the front of them. 
you just see them from behind and you hear like one of their voices. Like, I guess that was my Toby Maguire impression, which yeah, y'all feel free to let me know what, how that was down below and whatever. Um, <laughs> oh, oh, what if, what if it's the same scene? Okay. Same scene set up. He's Tom Holland's trapped. And you see the Spider-Man in the costumes and the recognizable costumes. You see them reach out. A, uh, one of them reaches out a hand and goes, Hey man, it's pizza time. <laughs> pizza time. <laughs> Oh, anyway, that's uh, uh, that's. I think it's gonna wrap it up, right? <laughs> yeah, that's gonna do it for tonight, y'all. Uh, this was a lot of fun going through uh, all of these. Um, yeah, one of them has the uh, organic webs, and everyone's like, "The hell? How do you do that?" I had to. We had to make ours. <laughs> <laughs> I just got the good spider, I guess. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's going to do it for tagline tonight. Y'all a lot of stuff we covered real quick as fast as possible. This episode, obviously going a lot later than I wanted, but I mean, there was a lot to dive into as far as the Spider-Man and news goes, uh, probably be a lot more Spider-Man related news over the course of this next week. Anything interesting pops up. We will be sure to talk about it next week as well. Uh, but until then, Make sure you follow us. You can follow me at Robert Adams MLP on Twitch or Twitch on Twitter, <laughs> Instagram, and everything begins with T at Twitch and Twitters and Twitters and Twitches um, on Very Twitter, cool. Instagram, and Letterbox. Of course, there's also my brother over here, the gentleman. You can follow him at Chris Adams MLP on Twitter, Instagram, Letterbox, and on Twitch.tv. So. Uh, make sure you follow us, the Cinefanatics, at Cinefanatics MLP on Twitter and Instagram. And was there anything else that we want to talk about before we end this? Uh, make sure you guys are hopping up on that Patreon. As we talked about at the beginning of this show today, we are doing a watch along on Thursday. We had a poll up on Twitter to get the masses to tell us what movie we should watch on Thursday. Uh, also to encourage them to join us for that watch along, which you can do by jumping onto the Patreon, signing up at the dude tier. It is the $5 tier. You can come hang out with us as we watch along to Jurassic Park, which is available on HBO Max. For those of you who want to know what streaming service or where you can find it, that's going to be the easiest place. We are doing that, I believe, at the same exact time as this uh, show goes live only on Thursday, which will be 6 Tomorrow Pacific. Night. Yeah, it's tomorrow. Yeah, it's six Pacific and nine Eastern. Nine Eastern. Yeah, I, it's like we're not on Tuesday anymore. We're again, we're on Wednesday. So <laughs> it is happening tomorrow night. That is when the watch along will be. So join us at six Pacific, nine Eastern for that. It's going to be a blast. Uh, again, we will spare no expense during that. I'm going to reuse the same exact lines over and over and over again. Yeah. Uh, anyways, I'll do it for tonight's episode. Thank y'all, everyone who was in the chat watching us live. Thank y'all for being here. We appreciate y'all watching. If you were not watching this live, if you're catching this on a replay, let us know your thoughts, feelings, opinions down below in the comments. Make sure you drop us a like and share these videos with your friends and family. That's how this grows. That's what YouTube wants you to do. That's what we want you to do because YouTube wants you to do it. So we all follow the rules here. Make sure you share and hit the subscribe button down below. Anyways, thank y'all for being here, and as for myself, as for my brother, as for the Cinefanatics, we will see y'all later. Tomorrow yeah. night for you patrons. Good night. Yeah. <laughs>